So I talked about protein recently in that video on protein and vegan diets and lysine, and I talked about protein powder. And every time I talk about protein powder, I get some sort of comment about protein powder being unhealthy. So I thought I would go through the kind of common reasons that people give for protein powder, specifically plant protein powder, vegan protein powder being unhealthy. Was that even a correct sentence? <laughs> reasons why plant protein powder maybe is unhealthy. So I think the major one is not about protein powder specifically, but just protein in general, that too much or extra protein is bad for you, specifically bad for your kidneys. And because protein powder is concentrated protein, it's basically inherently bad for you is what some people say. First, the claim that high protein is bad for your kidneys, this is partially true, but only for certain populations, only for people with kidney disease. There's really no evidence that eating more protein, high protein, whatever, uh, for the general population is bad for the kidneys. And actually the reverse may be true. This meta-analysis found a reduced risk of chronic kidney disease with higher protein. Second, you can incorporate protein powder without eating too much overall protein, right? It just depends on how much protein powder you're consuming, right? One scoop is going to be 20 something grams. Um, and it depends on the rest of your diet, how much protein is in the rest of your diet. Third, eating too much of anything is inherently bad for you, right? Too much is too much by definition. Now, what is too much exactly? What is too much protein? Like 80 grams? 100 grams? 300 grams? Certainly, if you're eating so much protein that you are cutting out other foods, like other healthy foods, that's not great. Anything so outside the realm of normal, like keto, right, where you are severely cutting your carbohydrates, pretty risky, I think. But just eating more than the RDA, double the RDA, even triple the RDA, where's the evidence this is unhealthy? Sure, there is a correlation between higher protein intake and certain negative health outcomes like heart disease, but is this because of the protein specifically or because typically when people are eating more protein, they're eating more animal protein, they're eating more meat, which means they're eating more saturated fat. This could explain why plant protein does not seem to have this link. We found limited suggestive evidence that substitution of animal protein with plant protein may decrease the risk of CVD mortality and type 2 diabetes incidence. Replacement of animal protein with plant protein for sustainability may also be considered as a public health strategy to lower the risk of CVD and diabetes. That is the conclusion of this recent systematic review of both randomized controlled trials and prospective cohorts. And they're not just talking about protein from whole plants. All of the RCTs are studying isolated plant protein, so basically protein powder. Now, the protein powder we're usually eating, you know, people are just buying protein powder from the store or whatever, usually does look a little bit different than what they're using in these studies. We usually aren't eating just protein. Protein powder isn't exactly delicious, so often there's flavoring in there, there's sugar. Some protein powders have little added sugar and others have a lot, as much as 23 grams per scoop. So that is from this Hidden Dangers of Protein Powders from Harvard Health. While I don't doubt them that protein powders can contain that amount of sugar, I don't think this is the norm, like not even close, especially not today, especially, especially with plant protein powders. I looked at all of the top plant protein powders I could find on Amazon, Vega, Orgain, Happy Viking, Plant Fusion, Garden of Life, Sun Warrior, Naked, Owen, Owen? All of them contained artificial sweeteners, not sugar, except for three of them, Vega, Naked, and Happy Viking. Now the Vega, most Vega contain Stevia. I'll talk more about Stevia and artificial sweeteners in a minute, but their Protein Made Simple line, which is my favorite, does have actual sugar. It has five grams of added sugar per serving. The Happy Viking is actually a meal replacement, so it has a bunch of stuff in it, um, offers more than just protein. It has erythritol and sugar, just two grams of added sugar per serving. And then finally, Naked. Uh, most of theirs are just protein powder, hence the name, right? But they do have this Naked Shake that has three grams added sugar per serving. And on the other end of the spectrum, we have protein powders with no sweetener at all. My favorite, my other favorite protein powder is the Now Sports Pea Protein. It's just pea protein isolate. Some protein powders wind up turning a glass of milk into a drink with more than 1,200 calories. So this one I am going to question. 
how? How would this even be possible? Your typical scoop of protein powder is what, like 100 to 150, maybe 200 calories? A glass of cow's milk, even whole cow's milk, even a huge glass, like say 16 ounces of whole cow's milk is less than 300 calories. Like how could you possibly <laughs> make a protein shake with 1200 calories? That's just protein powder and milk. Now you can make a protein shake or smoothie that's really high calorie. During my first pregnancy, when I was struggling to eat enough food, I actually did regularly make this shake that was soy milk and protein powder and tons of peanut butter. I don't even remember what else. One banana, an ounce of walnuts. So, I mean, just the walnuts alone, I think are like 180 calories, two cups. <laughs> two cups of soy milk, some cocoa powder, some soy protein so I can get some protein because that has been an issue not as much now but definitely earlier on like 20 grams of that into the smoothie, two tablespoons of peanut butter so it's super delicious, chia seeds and it was like a thousand calories but that that was the peanut butter <laughs> it wasn't the protein powder. So yes theoretically you could have a protein powder with 20 plus grams of sugar. Theoretically, you could make a protein shake with a thousand plus calories, but your average protein shake, protein smoothie is going to have way less sugar, way fewer calories. As I said, most plant protein powders, and I think most of the animal like whey ones now too, uh, use artificial sweeteners. They don't have any actual sugar in them. A lot of people are really concerned about these, especially sucralose and aspartame. Now, these are very rarely used in protein powders nowadays, probably because of their reputation. Instead, we see a whole lot of stevia. We see monk fruit. We see, what was that one I just learned about? Agave inulin fiber, also chicory root fiber. Fiber, uh, lacuma powder. There have been some animal studies on stevia using really high doses and finding some like fertility issues. I'm sure you can see the problems there. Animal, you know, mice or rats and super high doses. It's not really how we're using stevia. A ton of research on normal human consumption of stevia does show it to be safe and possibly beneficial. Less research exists for monk fruit, chicory root, etc. But what we do have says the same thing, right? They're safe, possibly beneficial. And again, there are protein powders that don't contain any of them. They, they're just protein. Like sugar, protein powders vary on how much fiber they contain. Obviously, if you have something like the Now Sports Pea Protein, that is going to have zero fiber. It's just protein. But some others contain kind of a lot. I think it was the Orgain. Yeah, the Orgain has four grams per serving. Regardless, we should be getting plenty of fiber from whole foods, whole plants. So the amount in a protein powder really shouldn't matter. If it does, you know, if you're concerned about the lack of fiber in your protein powder, I think you have bigger issues. Like <laughs> something's wrong with the diet. Unless maybe you find it's easier to digest when there's more fiber in the protein powder. I guess that's possible. Speaking of digestion, bloating, and cramping, these are common with protein powders, especially whey, but I've seen it with some plant proteins as well, usually pea protein some people have a hard time with. The first protein powder I ever tried, this was like, I don't even know, 20 years ago, something like that was a whey protein, and I had one glass and said never again <laughs> because it felt awful. And then I tried a hemp protein, which caused me different kind of issues. It just tasted disgusting, <laughs> like dirt. Um, I personally don't have any issues with pea or soy or any other protein, vegan protein I've tried. But if you do obviously try a different kind, you know, if you struggle with pea, maybe try a soy based one, maybe try a slower introduction, right? Using like a quarter of a scoop in a shake instead of a whole scoop. The FDA leaves it up to manufacturers to evaluate the safety and labeling of products. So there's no way to know if a protein powder contains what manufacturers claim. This is true and we have seen issues with protein powders specifically in the past. You may remember that report a few years ago from the Clean Label Project. Supposedly they found dangerous amounts of lead and other heavy metals in a lot of different protein powders, especially plant protein powders. I actually made a video on this and um, yeah, it's, it's a lot less scary than they would have you believe. 
This study was published in 2020, and the goal is, I think, what we want to know. They want to figure out if the amount of heavy metals found in these products actually poses a health risk to humans. And they relied on data not only from the Clean Label Project, but also from consumer reports. Consumption of protein powder supplements containing arsenic, cadmium, lead, and mercury is not associated with an increased risk of non-carcinogenic health effects due to heavy metal exposure, nor is it associated with an increased risk for carcinogenic effects. I love this section in particular where they compare exposure from these protein powders to exposure from an average diet. So for example, the mean concentration for arsenic in three servings, three servings of protein powder was 5.9 milligrams, whereas the average diet provides 9.9 milligrams per day. Even the highest, the product with the most arsenic had 16.9, micrograms, and again, that's three servings, which is still significantly lower than an individual ingesting a seafood-rich meal once per day. How much you want to bet the people complaining about protein powder contamination regularly consume seafood? As per usual, the dose makes the poison. Now, I think you could argue that because protein powder is unnecessary, any heavy metal exposure just isn't worth it. So like, don't consume protein powder. But that's not the same as saying plant-based protein powders are full of toxic heavy metals and dangerous, right? If you're still worried, I highly recommend subscribing to Consumer Labs. They test all kinds of supplements, including protein powders. They test what's on the label, what's supposed to be in there, and they also test for heavy metals and gluten, I think. It's not free, but as someone who consumes various supplements like every single day, I think it's worth it. So to wrap this up, in my opinion, I don't think there's any good evidence showing protein powder, especially plant protein powder, is unhealthy. Unnecessary? Sure. But, you know, a lot of things are unnecessary, right? Protein powder is just an easy way to bump up your protein if you want to do that. And for some people who really struggle to get just a, a bare minimum amount of protein, it can be a really healthy, even necessary addition to the diet. But obviously that's not the norm. And before anyone says it's a waste if you're trying to build muscle because everyone knows plant protein is shit, no. Numerous studies have found similar results between plant and animal protein. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I really do hope you enjoyed it. Please do like and subscribe, and please do let me know of any uh, video topics you would like me to cover. And of course, thank you so much to all of my members here on YouTube and my patrons at patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. I do post two exclusive videos a month for tier two members and patrons. I do a vlog and I do a controversial subject at the end of the month, just kind of whatever I want to talk about. That's it for me. Thanks again, guys. New video soon. Can you see it's so pretty? This is called Mermaid Bait from Mooncat, the snail polish. And it's really cool. Like it's got, it's so shifty. It's got so many different colors. It looks so different in different lighting. It's really, really fun. Um, perfect name, you know. Uh, I took a bath the other day and like with the water drops on them. It's so, it just looks so cool. But applying it, oh, it is goopy. It is thick and goopy. It is not fun to apply. And I, I think that's just, there are trade-offs, right? I think in order to have all of this shimmery, chromey stuff in there, like it's just not going to be a thin formula, right? So in order to have it look this cool, it's going to be kind of goopy. So I don't know. I don't like, is it worth it? I definitely have other polishes that are, you know, very shimmery and pretty, but like, man, this is... It's pretty cool. Definitely not worth the price. I'll tell you that. Their normal price and now they're raising their prices. What the what? Some of their polishes are going to be $18. No, 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 no. I will get that used on Mercari. Thank you very much. Oh, really sad news. I mentioned Dimension Nails in a recent video and unfortunately she is closing up shop. Um, so I just wanted to let you guys know because she's going to be having some sales. I think starting in June, the first week's going to be a certain percentage off and then more and more and more until like the end of the month or something. So uh, yeah, if you wanted to pick up any of her stuff, go do it before it's all gone.